Cooking shortcuts. We all take them. You know, you need a night off sometimes. So it's the freezer, it's the pantry, or it's the phone. And for most people, that means pizza or pasta. And today, I've got three pizza pasta making secrets so you can forget the frozen, bypass the box, and ditch delivery forever today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cook's Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cook's Code, everyone. It's a special one today. It's the free public weekly show for the methods, the techniques, and the insights into better food and cooking. It's where all the carefree cooks get together. What? Who? Me? Yeah, I'm a carefree cook. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. And if you want to get an email reminder of when I'm popping up live like this, you should go to webcookingclasses.com slash live. Oh, schedule. What's going on? Here it is. Boy, a lot going on in our Carefree Cooks world this week and next. Every Tuesday at noon, Carefree Cooks Code, just like here and now. This Thursday, 5 p.m., we continue our Inside View series of classes on seafood for the Carefree Free Cooks Insiders Cooking Club. Uh, then next Monday, I'm going to be cooking live on Facebook for everybody to enjoy. I've got something really cool that I can't tell you about yet. <laughs> I've never cooked it like in a video format before, so you don't want to miss Monday. Stick on Chef Todd Moore page on Facebook to see more about it. Next Friday, the 27th, another benefit of being an insider of the Carefree Cooks Insiders Cooking Club because we're going to have our first virtual wine tasting event on Zoom. That's going to be a lot of fun also. So always stuff going on. Stick here on this page because I'm always adding new events and trying to do cool stuff for you. Let me ask you a question. Can I, um, how's your cooking repertoire lately? O- over the past two years or so, have you found yourself cooking more of your own food at home? And t- t- Take, are you taking pictures of your own food now? Yeah, this has happened for a lot of people. And that's great because that means my mission is working very well. And I get very excited when my mission is working well. But I know, I know the last thing you're going to let go of. I, I just know it because th- this is what happens of all the frozen foods, the things that you used to keep, the boxed, the canned items in your pantry, or the ones that you had delivered or or got takeout. There are many that over the past two years, you've figured out how to make yourself. I, I know it. I see it. I see the photos in our Carefree Cooks community. I see what's being shared online. I I like to watch the latest cooking trends. The first thing I noticed was a lot of Mexican replacement. And that's because it's probably one of the easier things to do to make your own burritos, tacos, enchiladas, quesadillas. This is one of the best burritos I make with a cheese sauce on top. Well, look, hence, I haven't been to a Mexican restaurant in more than two years because I started making burritos like this in my own home. And I see it in our Carefree Cooks community as well. I found this really nice a burrito bowl from Lynn. Lynn must be saying, sorry, local restaurant, I'm making it better. I'm saving money. I'm controlling the ingredients that I want to use. And I know when I was living in downtown Baltimore, I really missed the Chinese food delivery when it closed because this was kind of a lazy go-to for me. When I didn't want to cook, 
when I felt like I didn't have enough time to cook, it was all about Chinese delivery. Until I discovered another way. Because I always woke up in the middle of the night drinking water and stuff. Once I started making my own Mongolian beef, looks pretty good, with fried rice, make my own fried rice, it's cleaner, it's lighter, it's not so salty, right? And I liked it a lot better. But look, I didn't get this right on the first try. It's not a magic trick. I had to kind of work at my method a little bit, but now my takeout, <laughs> my stay in is better than any takeout. Uh, Sue is doing it as well. She said that she was inspired by my fried rice method. I did a video on, on fried rice during that period and she figured, heck, if this guy can do it, <laughs> You know, I should be able to do it as well. Well, here's her stir fry dish and it doesn't come loaded with MSG and cheap cuts of chicken and things like that. It's empowering, you know? And when I moved to the Northern neck of Virginia from downtown Baltimore, I suddenly had my hands on a lot more fresh fish. I, I wasn't going to be making Baltimore Harbor sushi. That, that's, that's, a, that, that, that's a good joke, actually. Anyway, here's the sushi I started making because I could get my hands on fresh tuna. There's another takeout that I am now making better. It's a lot of fun adding these skills to your toolbox of carefree cooking methods. But I know the last thing to go. The last type of food that people give up is the one that gets the least respect. This type of food people still pay other people to do for them. I mean, have you heard the phrase something like even bad pizza is pretty good pizza? Something like that. that that's not the whole joke, but, but people think it's true because there's just not a high standard for pizza because most people are used to the frozen disc from the grocery store. And frozen pizza is a $6 billion industry in the US. And the pizza delivery industry, what do you think happened to them over the past two years? They went from $11 billion in 2019 to just shy of $20 billion industry in 2021. $20 billion of you sitting there waiting for your pizza to arrive, often cold, sometimes with all the cheese sloshed to one side, right? but always unsatisfying in one way or another. But heck, even bad pizza is good pizza, right? Oh, and don't even get me started on the way that takeout pasta is prepared in an aluminum container. And cause usually this is the way it works. All the dry pasta is cooked early in the day. And then when you order it, they shock it in hot water. And, and they send it out to you. But what I hate is when they put that watery pasta in the aluminum takeout pan and they put a scoop of sauce on top. Why do I have to mix up my own pasta? Did you think I only wanted sauce on half of my pasta? It's maddening to me. The, the way that, that this is such good food and it's treated so badly and I know that we can do it better. Dry pasta, frozen pasta, even pasta in a can, it's all so disappointing. But maybe not because we don't expect much from our pizza and our pasta. But I'll tell you what, I'm changing that today. We're gonna change that. You've replaced all that food you used to buy with much better food that you now make. So let's include pizza. Let's include pasta in those efforts because our pizza can be so much better. We will expect more from ourselves than from Papa John or the Red Baron or the DiGiorno stuffed crust. Oh, goodness. If I'm going to make my own pizza, I'm going to start studying it and I'm going to do it right. Right here, that's my white pizza with smoked peppers. You would fall on the floor if you tasted it. White garlic cream sauce with smoked peppers. It's crazy. Nobody sells that. Nobody's going to deliver and bring that to me. And that's why today I want to share with you just three pizza and pasta making secrets so you can forget frozen. You can bypass the box. You can ditch delivery forever. This is going to be a rapid fire round of great tips, some techniques for bringing the most popular type of frozen, dried, or takeout food 
back, back into your kitchen, back under your control. Are you ready? This is going to be fun. Thumbs up. You ready to go? Okay. Here's the three secrets. Secret number one, how to create a crispy cracker uh, or a soft doughy pizza crust by adding just one ingredient and doing this one tip. I'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute. Secret number two is how the same three ingredient pasta dough can become either long noodles or stuffed ravioli. Just one little twist, one little difference. And secret number three is how to change a pizza sauce into a pasta sauce or the other way, because you know when to use which. And people make this mistake on their pizzas and pastas too, using the wrong kind of sauce. All right, so let's talk about making your pizza dough. It seems intimidating, right? You know, baking bread kind of thing, working with the dough, dealing with yeast, temperamental yeast. It just seems like there's so much opportunity for you to screw it up, right? So it's this fear and intimidation is what keeps people from the best pizza they've ever had. And the best pizza they've ever had is topped with pride. That's the best pizza topping, pride. Because the real key to making a great pizza crust is found in just two basic concepts. The first is the type of flour you use. Any pizza crust, wh whether you want a thin cracker one or a thicker doughy one, it always needs to be a little bit chewy. And the chewiness in the dough comes from developing gluten. Gluten is the stretchy protein strands that are formed when wheat flours, uh, you add moisture and agitation, mixing and moisture with the wheat flour, you get gluten. And the key to developing gluten in the mixing of your pizza dough is to follow the 10 step yeast dough mixing method. Now, some flours are strong, some flours are weak, some are high in starch, low in protein, others high in protein, low in starch, some good for making sauces, others good for pizza and dough. So th this idea of picking the right flour and then following those 10 steps, because there's always a method, right? So if you can repeat 10 steps again and again, you've got a great pizza dough. So the 10 steps, this is where we mix all the ingredients together. You need it for about 30 minutes or so. But look, you know, most people aren't patient enough for that. But if you have a mixer, you really just set it and forget it. I put my mixer in the bathroom, like in, in a closet, because it's a little noisy. Turn it on, shut the door for 30 minutes. But look, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. If, if you don't have a mixer, you could still do it by hand. I mean, people have been doing this forever. It's, it's enjoyable, it's tactile to knead the dough, to get your hands in it, right? So after a while, the dough rises because of the yeast and you punch it down. It's gonna rise again and you knock the air out of it again. It's fun, but this is what develops that malty, yeasty flavor in the pizza. But look, here's the secret that I wanted to share with you. The secret to changing from a crispy cracker crust so a, to a soft bready one and back again if you want. The one ingredient that you should add is a fat, probably olive oil or whatever your favorite liquid fat is because fat is a tenderizer in dough. Just told you about gluten, which you need, but fat shortens the gluten strands and it makes it a little softer. So if you want a little more tender dough, you add a little bit of oil to it. But then you decide whether you're gonna roll it flat, fill it with sauce and toppings and bake it right away, or will you take advantage of step seven in the 10 step yeast dough production process? So if you break, bake it right away, you're gonna get a cracker crust. If you wait at step seven, it's what's called proofing. So if you were making a loaf of bread or a baguette, this is where you would shape it into a log and you'd give it that last little rise, right? You're getting ready to bake it. But we let the yeast in proofing add a little, uh, eat a little bit more sugar, give off a little bit more gas to further leaven the dough before it goes out in the oven. So if you roll out your pizza dough and you let it sit for an hour or so, you'll see it rise. You'll see it get thicker and breadier. Proofing your pizza crust gives you the, the bready doughy one. Baking it right after rolling it gives you the dense cracker crust. And you can do the same thing with a lean dough, one that doesn't have any fat, or a rich dough, one that you've added fat to. Uh, like my favorite pizza crust is my non 
dough pizza crust. It's not that it's a non-dough, it's N-A-A-N. You can see there. <laughs> it's a formula I've been working on for the past two years or so, and I've got it just about perfected now. It's got olive oil and yogurt in the formula. Comes out crispy and perfect every time. Okay, secret number two is how the same three ingredient pasta dough can become both long noodles or stuffed ravioli with one small twist. Okay, so let's talk about gluten again. That stretchy web that gives structure to breads and pizza dough. It's absolutely necessary in pasta dough because the pasta dough needs to be really pliable, right? Pasta can't crumble. But pasta dough isn't mixed like pizza dough is. Pasta dough doesn't need a 10-step method. Pasta dough actually has a one-step method. You mix together semolina flour, egg, and a little bit of water. Sometimes not even. That's the method. So it's really simple. You don't even need an electric mixer for this one. And Italian grandmas everywhere, they used to mix it on the countertop. Right? You'd get your flour, make a little well in the middle of it, crack the egg, start to pull it together. So where pasta gets its gluten from, its pliability, so you can cut it into long strips or, or have flat sheets, is from what's called a laminating process. You roll out the pasta dough, you'll get a very rough flat sheet at first, but then you fold it onto itself right side over left, left side over right, and you roll it again. And then each time you do this book folding thing, you create layers. And the layers help the pasta dough to bend, to stretch without breaking so it holds a ravioli filling or, or it stays together in a long, thin noodle. So a basic pasta dough is really very simple. It's just three ingredients, like I mentioned. But once you get this laminating technique right, you're making long, flat sheets of pasta that are tender. The stuff cooks in, in 60 seconds, 100, 100 seconds, less than two minutes. Then it becomes anything that you want. And you don't even need a special cutter, like for fettuccine noodles. I roll out a flat pasta sheet and then roll it up like a cigar and cut across it with my chef's knife. And they come out to these long noodles. It's simple. So the same simple dough that makes ravioli, makes lasagna, makes manicotti, as well as all those long flat noodles, you'll know when you do this one twist. Adding fat to it and laminating is the difference between those doughs. So <sighs> revealing secrets that are going to help you. This is getting even more exciting than I thought. <laughs> it's getting more exciting as we go along, isn't it? I'm telling you, the first time that you eat the pasta that you made, that you created, you'll shake your head at the difference between that and the box stuff. It's like an entirely different thing and you may never go back. So now we're at the point where we are so close <laughs> to eliminating another cultural food from our takeout routine. So like I told you, I make better Mexican food than the restaurant now. I like my fried rice better than the salty delivery and my pizza and pasta is about to meet the same successful end because once you know a few secrets, you're going to be stoked to start making your own pizza and pasta just like I do every Friday night. Every Friday night is pizza night in my house. Been like that for about two years now and I make a wide variety of pizzas. That's my pizza. And I'm not just talking about tomato sauce and mozzarella. That's my pizza. Uh, I make a duck and fig sauce pizza. Fig on the pizza, roasted duck. It's unbelievable. That's my, my pizza over there. I, I do a smoked pepper and clam pizza. I just did this past Friday. Your head will explode. It's out of this world. These are all my different pizzas. I make a bacon white pizza that most people... Never thought of, never thought of using a garlic cream sauce on a pizza before. They might have thought about Alfredo for pasta, right? But not for pizza. And I think I know why. Because they don't know the difference between a pizza sauce and a pasta sauce. And that's secret number three, how to change a pizza sauce into a pasta sauce because you know when to use which. So here's an easy thing for you to remember. You bake a pizza in an oven, right? A pizza is baked in a dry convective heat environment. Things get brown and they dry up. 
but generally you simmer pasta in a liquid and that's a moist convective heat environment. So immediately the fact that you have two cooking methods that are on the opposite ends of the spectrum really should tell you that they need two types of sauces because a pizza sauce isn't immediately a pasta sauce and a pasta sauce isn't immediately good for pizza either. And, and again, I'm not going to limit myself to just tomato sauce because there are also a ton of different types of tomato sauce but not every pizza and every pasta sauce has to have tomatoes in it. I make white sauce all the time for pizza and pasta. I started making yellow sauce, yellow sauces with garlic and all kinds of herbs and aromatics. It gives this wonderful buttery flavor to the pizza crust. Or when I do my fettuccine, like a lemon scampi thing that I love to make, that's really cool. I even make a pink sauce, the secret pink sauce. All right, I'll tell you the secret <laughs> to the secret pink sauce. I mix the garlic cream sauce with my lighter tomato sauce, red and white. It makes pink, but it's great on both pizza and pasta. Um, I also do what I call a deep red sauce, right? It's tomato with ground meat, mirepoix, carrot, onion, celery, sauteed, and then pureed gives it a much deeper flavor. So what's fun about this is it gets to be so exciting mixing and matching sauces between pizza and pasta that I make. This, this is how I come up with so many new ideas, but there's one important consideration and it's really simple, really. Once I tell you secret number three, <laughs> you're gonna think it was too obvious to, to be called a secret. I, I didn't mean to trick you, um, you know, but maybe if you didn't know it, then it is a secret, right? That kind of thing, because it's all about the amount of moisture. Simply, a pizza sauce should be much thicker than a pasta sauce. And when I make that cream sauce, the garlic cream I keep talking about for pizza, it's more like a paste, right? I spread it onto the pizza dough. It's like the consistency of mayonnaise. That would not go on pasta. When I use the garlic cream sauce for pasta, I add more milk to it. So it's pourable, right? It's, it's got to coat the pasta. It's got to find its way into the penne pasta in the middle of the noodles. So a sauce with too much liquid is going to make a very watery, soggy pizza. And if you have too much water in your sauce, the flour in the dough gelatinizes. Gelatinization of starches, it starts to absorb that moisture and it gets soggy. So whether it's red sauce, deep red sauce, a white sauce, the secret pink sauce, your yellow sauce, anything you do needs to be thicker for pizza than it is for pasta. And that's why so many pizza sauces are really just a puree of tomatoes, just like crushed up tomatoes, that's it. I even make a tomato pie, just raw sliced tomatoes layered on a pizza dough and topped with cheese. And if you find that your pizzas have a lot of excess liquid on it, well, the culprit is probably a sauce that needs to be a little thicker. And the last bit of advice I can give you about making your pizza and pasta the best it can be is the cheese that you use. Don't use pre-shredded cheese. Buy a block of cheese, shred it or slice it yourself because that pre-shredded cheese in the Ziploc bag, it usually has some kind of anti-caking agent to it to keep it from sticking together. Usually something like cornstarch. And cornstarch is a thickening agent, so it's really going to mess up your sauces. That's the thing. Whew, we have done such a great job of bringing most of our frozen foods, most of our canned and boxed foods, as well as some of the takeout and delivery meals back into our own hands. I'm proud of you. I really am. Now it's time to do the same for pizza and pasta and be proud of those results because I know a lot of home cooks that would love to be the best pizza baker they've ever encountered. And I know there are tons of home cooks that would love to make up their own raviolis, mushroom ravioli, one of my favorite pumpkin, any flavor you can dream up because it is so much better to make it yourself than paying someone else to do it for you. And that's why I have created my brand new Pizza Pasta Proud online course. I'm so excited about this. Pizza Pasta Proud promises to be one of my most impactful courses ever. I thought about what do they need? What is going to set them free? Because it will set 
So many people free from accepting all these disappointing versions of pizza and pasta when it could be so much better. This new course chronicles my own journey, really, in trying to replace all the pizza and pasta I was getting from somewhere else. When I lived in Baltimore, there was a pizza place across the street and their pizza was always disappointing. So this program came out of that desire. It's 21 videos, they get right to the point and they're gonna take you into my kitchen where I can help you answer the questions I know that you have about starting this journey. You're thinking, you're asking, isn't making your own pizza dough incredibly complicated? No, <laughs> it's not. And I actually think it's a lot of fun. My Pizza Pasta Proud course starts with the truth about flowers. It's an important foundation to understand the ingredients that go into pizzas and pastas and how they interact because this is where you start to alter things for your own desire. You learn to charge up the yeast with a little more sugar if you want a doughier pizza, more rise. You want to add olive oil, a fat, to tenderize and make it softer. That's where you learn these things. And as for pizza dough being complicated, it most certainly won't be, just by lesson number two, because I'll teach you this 10-step yeast dough production method. You'll witness me do it, and once you remove your palm from your forehead, you'll go do the same thing because it seems so simple once you know, and you're going to have your own pizza night tradition. We're going to make a lean dough together, the 10-step formula with no fat at all. You can make a French baguette out of this dough. You can make pretzels out of this dough as well. Then we're going to mix my non-dough formula that I told you about earlier. It's the one I've been working on for two years. That's a rich dough that adds oil and yogurt to it. Um, also, very good as a bread <laughs> with no toppings at all. We're going to go through all the steps, punching and rolling the dough, proofing, very important, topping it and baking off our perfect pie. The next chapter, seven pasta lessons, we start with the right cooking methods for pasta. And I start with dry pasta from a box because the way that the sauce is added, the presentation, like I talked about, of any kind of pasta is really important, but especially when you get to making your own pasta, it's a good way to study uh, how to do that correctly. We're gonna mix up our own pasta dough. We'll roll it into sheets. We're gonna make some really cool long noodles as well. And then we whip up some quick fillings and it's gonna be time for what I call cheesy pillows, shroomy pillows, and pumpkin e pillows, <laughs> three types of ravioli. And I'm confident that just based on those three, it's going to inspire you to find the filling that's really perfect for you. Then you're going to need some sauces. All these great pizzas and pastas uh, that you're going to be making, the next chapter covers all five of the sauces that I make on a regular basis. You'll see me make my light tomato sauce. I'll do the deep red sauce my white garlic cream sauce, the secret pink sauce, you already know the secret to, and the yellow scampi sauces. But you won't need more than five. That'll pretty much do it because there's an endless number of toppings and cheeses and herbs and spices that will add variety as well. And you'll be thankful, like I am, that there are 52 Fridays in a year because I've got at least that many pizza ideas floating around in my head. Pizza pasta proud, gives you the best foundation in understanding the ingredients, the methods, and the insider tips and tricks to make better takeout food than your takeout restaurant and enjoy the time in your kitchen much more than boiling boring boxes, right? Tuition for Pizza Pasta Proud will be $199 with non-expiring access, but that means once you get proud, you're always proud. But today here, this is the launch party. Woo! You would expect during a launch party to have some kind of special discount, an introductory price for people that like to get involved right away. So for the very smart early adopters, you're right. <laughs> there will be during the launch party, I'm going to do what I love to do, what I always do. I slash the price in half as an introduction and I add a whole bunch of really valuable bonus items. Half the price more secrets revealed. That just means twice the value in this program. And free bonus video number one is my quack pizza. It's the duck and fig pizza I mentioned before, and it is quackers, man. 
Bonus video number two is what to do with that extra pizza dough. When life gives you extra pizza dough, you make garlic knots. That's what you do. And this video will show you how to make these buttery twisted dough knots for a great appetizer. There are five more bonus lessons that will show you what to do with your pasta after you've made it. In the first, I'll demonstrate how to remove about 400 calories from Alfredo sauce. My version is much healthier and tastes better too. Then we're gonna make chicken broccoli Alfredo in the next bonus. This is a, a standard dish. It's the number one frozen food and you'll be inventing your own variations from this video. Pasta carbonara is another method that you can change all the ingredients you want and still do it in only one pan. Macaroni is pasta, right? And mac and cheese is one of the most popular microwave frozen entrees. So let's start making it ourselves. I've got a flavor boosting secret for my mac and cheese that's gonna get you away from the blue box forever. And in many of these pizza and pasta videos in this program, you're gonna see me use my roasted garlic paste as a spread. I spread it on the pizza dough. I put it in butter for a saute. I sometimes think I should have a holster with, with the garlic spread in it. This final bonus video is how I make my roasted garlic spread, something I keep in my refrigerator or on my holster at all time. Um, did I say final bonus? Did I say final? No, 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 that's not the final. I didn't mean to say final. You didn't think I'd forgotten the best one. You didn't think I'd forgotten the best one, did you? You know, I believe there is no sense in spending six months creating a new course if you can't get a cool t-shirt out of it too, right? So get started with this new program and get the Pizza Pasta Proud t-shirt that I'm wearing today. Not, not, not this very shirt. We've got more than one of them. You get a new shirt. You get one in your size if you want, but it's yours for free when you join us. And that makes this entire program 26 total videos that'll have you making your own pastas, your own pizzas, your sauces. You're gonna be proud of what you've accomplished. You're gonna look sharp in it and a brand new t-shirt too. So if you're ready to forget frozen, ready to bypass the box, ditch delivery, pizza pasta proud is the answer that will get you there. Get started at pizzapastaproud.com slash join dash course. It says on the bottom there, join dash course. The Carefree Cooks Insiders Cooking Club, as a matter of fact, they've been using this course as a benefit of their insiders membership for the past two weeks. So I let them play around with it. I let the members of the insiders community have free preview access as I was creating and they love it. Becky says the non-dough is the bomb. <laughs> Couldn't say it any better. Her taste buds are getting a workout, she says. Teresa made this beautiful white pizza with the formulas and the techniques that she discovered in this course. Thomas made a white pizza for the very first time, he said, and it was incredible. It was so incredible that there was only one piece left when he even thought about taking a photo. <laughs> so no photo. He says he's made pizza often, but this was an idea for a white one. Hey, Tom. Learning something new is what I do. Uh, Trudy rolled out these perfect pasta sheets, beautiful, and then just decided to stuff them with spinach and a bunch of cheeses, made a nice, light, healthy manicotti. Kathy said she wanted a quick supper, so she watched my yellow scampi sauce video. Her daughter <laughs> liked it so much, maybe a picky eater. She said, that's one I want you to make again. Think of the pride, right? George took pizza pasta proud and he decided he liked a deep dish pizza instead. And I don't even teach deep dish pizza in this course. It doesn't matter to George. He was inspired and went his own way. Patricia used the white garlic sauce to make an artichoke pizza. I mean, come on. That has got to be better than any pizza that Patricia has ever bought somewhere any better than any time you've trusted someone else to make your pizza. But now she does it better. We all do it better. We control the ingredients, we save money, and we're proud of what we've accomplished. Pizza Pasta Proud is my newest online course and it'll sell for $199 once this introductory period is over. And that time is coming soon. So go to pizzapastaproud.com slash join dash course and get started with Pizza Pasta Proud today. You're gonna find more room in your freezer 
You're going to have an empty shelf in your pantry and you're going to have a greater sense of pride in what you're accomplishing in the kitchen.